Hello. I recently bought a dozen of these four litre toffee jars and I decided I'm going to make six at once or at least a tent and the only thing I've done in advance is cut the mesh so if you want to see me do a video of me cutting the mesh then let me know in the comments down below you nutter just remember these are praying mantis so the lid will have a hole in it and mesh on top so what I can put in here is limited and how high I can go is also limited so this room will basically be the bottom part the top part along to the mantis let's go on with it Mantis terrariums don't really need a drainage layer, but I thought I'd add one anyway. It's good practice. As this goes on for quite a while, I think it's probably best if I just uh, speed things up. I'm just going to put a piece of organza mesh in here to stop the substrate mixing with the drainage layer. This substrate mix is slightly different. It's decomposed leaf litter that I've done myself. Sphagnum moss and cocoa fiber with some crushed lumpwood charcoal. Let's speed things up again. Well, to every one, let's start by giving it a good soak. As always, lower at the front than it is at the back to give the impression of some kind of elevation and depth. When adding stones, try and keep the same type of stone, don't mix different ones. For instance, putting volcanic rock and slate together, uh, pebbles, it doesn't really look good. And if possible, try and keep odd numbers of stones, even though for one of these, I actually put even numbers in. It seems I'm cleaning the container for an uncomfortable amount of time, it's because I am. I have no idea what I'm going to do next. At this point I've decided just to put moss at the bottom because I can't really work with the top half so I can't have anything too tall in there, otherwise it will disturb the mantis when they molt.
In the bottom done, all that remains is something for the mantis to climb up to the top so it can hang upside down on the lid to malt. I decided on using old ivy roots as it used to climb up the back of my house and when we killed it off we ended up with loads of twisted vine-like roots and after drying them out they look great. Sadly I can't do much with the design on the upper part because the mantis really does need the space. And that's about as complicated as I can make it. Now all that remains is to give it a good spray down, pop the lid on and let it settle for its new owner. I'm going to use broken up roofing slate for this one as it looks really cool when used in contrast with the moss. I decided to use the traditional mossy branches for this one. I can't have too many because uh, the guy that's going in here is huge.
team or shield counters. But I want it quite lame and foresty. Because uh, that's where it looks like where it lives. I've had this cool branch for about six months now, soaking in rainwater, so it should be nice and sodden and the moss is well attached to it. Couldn't wait to use it. I think I've got room to sneak in this asparagus fur. They're a fantastic plant. This piece of sheet moss is actually attached to back, so it should do really, really well as it's soaking again for six months. Finally, the obligatory stick for the mantis to get to the top of the enclosure. This enclosure is going to be for another Timor Shield Mantis, which is even bigger than the last one. But I thought I'd do something different and throw a plant in this time. This is a Ficus pumula variegata, which I'm hoping will grow up this piece of bark with moss on it. And if not, it's not too big a deal because it won't really get in the mantis way. flat rock in here so I've just not got moss only on the bottom. Stops it being too green. I want to use several different mosses because then you get the different colours and textures. Really makes a difference. This piece is the same kind of moss that's growing on the back, so it helps it blend into the background. And now I've decided I want some hypnum moss, which is in a different bin across the garden, so bear with me.
waste not, want not. Time for the climbing stick. Let's go for roofing slate again. I'm going to be using a vining peperomia for this part as it doesn't really matter as I'm putting a spiny flower mantis in here which are quite small and uh, this, this jar should see it out for its life. This build took an inconceivably large amount of moss. using the ivy roots again because I have so much of it. I've used this several times, this is just spider grass, but it, 
it works. This is a really simple enclosure, but this one is for a special mantis. It's a giant Asian mantis, but it's a disabled one with two legs. So I'm being very careful and giving it plenty of things to clamber onto. Yeah, you got it. I decided I needed Hitman Moss again. That was thoroughly annoying. Okay, so here they are, all finished. Brought upstairs, I couldn't find anywhere I could put them. I would show them all off and have a light above them. Because I've yet to build a shelf on this wall to put them on. But if you like this, then uh, drop us a like and subscribe. Share, maybe even. And uh, I'll be back for the next one. And if you get a chance, jump on our Discord. The link's in the uh, description below. See you later.